has come out and said that he is working on a contract extension with Montez Sweat. Me and Bobby today are going to talk about why it's important that he actually locked Montez up to an extension or is going to be looked at as another failure for Ryan Poles. We're going to talk about that, plus updates to the injury report and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central. Bobby Hayes in the building today for the daily episode. And uh, before we get into the Ryan Poles of it all, we got an injury report. And this is the same thing as always. Jaquan Brisker, concussion, still in concussion protocol. Nate Davis is out with the ankle. Tremaine Edmonds is out with his knee. Justin Fields is out with his thumb. Terrell Smith is out. And Dan Feeney, who we traded the uh, sixth-round pick for, and he played three snaps since we got him. All listed as possibly being out. Um, what do you what do you like when you look at this injury report for the Chicago Bears? It's, it's been full all season long. You know, we've had players that have come off of it, come back and forth on it as well. Um, but when you when you look at this, especially Jaquan Brisker, you know, with having Montez Sweat, who I think he is slated to go ahead and play in Sunday's game, I really kind of wanted to see what a, an improved front line helped with that secondary, but what sticks out with you most, Bobby, with this injury report, brother? Uh, Tremaine Edmonds, man. I think that, yeah. that that's the one that sticks out for me. Um, simply because I felt like he was he kind of started off a bit slow and he was starting to come on. You seen back to back weeks of interceptions from him. You also seen him and TJ Edwards kind of seem like they was working as that that uh linebacker duo that we wanted and need for the Chicago Bears. And then yeah. honestly, it's kind of like it's not over. So I wouldn't say that it's a missed opportunity because he could still come back. But, man, would have been great to have him on Sunday against the Saints team. Now with Montez Sweat in front of him and those guys, just to see how they can work. And it also sucks in the backfield, too, with those injuries to Jaquan Briska and then still being questionable or wondering what the hell is going on with Eddie Jackson, for sure. So I, I'm sure. going to put him as the main one. For sure. Um, uh, And luckily, though, with Tremaine Edmonds, it's going to move Jack Sanborn back to that middle linebacker position. So we'll get to see C-Dub's son out there to see how he performs. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, overall, it just sucks because a lot of these names, when you look at Nate Davis, Tremaine Edmonds, Terrell Smith, and Dan Feeney, they're all new acquisitions this year, right. man, we, and they've been on that list. So it, it really sucks, man, especially like with, uh, like you said, Tremaine and TJ Edwards really kind of getting their rhythm together. TJ Edwards has been a dog all season, man. Oh, Shout yeah, out to TJ sure. Edwards, man. But Tremaine Edmonds kind of, you know, getting in the right situation. Nate Davis, when he's on the field, looks pretty damn good. He just, we haven't seen much yep, of him on the absolutely. field for yep. the Bears this year either. So it just, it really comes together and just brings the fact that we haven't had any form of continuity or really allowing chemistry to get going either uh, with this team all season. Like, we just haven't had, had the ability to. Suck. I agree. It does suck, man, because you definitely – we already know what the record speak for itself, and that's exactly what the Bears have been is just not good at all, absolutely bad. But you definitely want these guys to come in and see if, like, especially now with you going down the stretch, you already played eight games, you got like nine more to go, or, I believe, or something like that. So you want to see if these guys can, you know, try to make like an in-season push. It's not over. It is just one game that's going to happen Sunday. and But hopefully these guys can all come back. But I will mention with no Tremaine Edmonds and Jack Sanborn moving up, hopefully we get to, you know, call Noah Sewell's name a little bit. That would be nice, right? That would be nice to see Noah Sewell get out there some. Um, and I and I hope that we see him. We I can't remember how much he's played when the last time he's played in a game, but like Noah Sewell is another guy that everybody was really excited to bring over to the Chicago Bears roster that we drafted. And you know, it's a rookie, so it, it is what it is. You don't always get to see a lot of rookies, especially right. with a team that's been struggling, having injuries, things like that. He also had some injuries to start the season off as well. Exactly. Um, but it really just brings together like this season has been riddled with injuries and drama. That's what this Max. whole goddamn season has been, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> Whoever the script writer is for the Chicago Bears, man, you keeping us very, very interested. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> That's a fact, bro. They just really, man, it is what it is when it comes to that. Uh, but let's move on. Um, so we know we traded for Montez. What we traded the second round pick for him. Uh, it came out that there had been no framework worked on an extension when they traded for him. Ryan Poles came out yesterday in his press conference says that he absolutely is starting work on an extension for Montez Sweat. Also said in that that he wants to keep Jay. He does not want to lose Jalen Johnson. Um, he even said uh, to the point where it, it, he feels like it'd have to take a late first round pick to replace what Jalen Johnson brings which brings to the point of the whole contract negotiation. But with yeah. the Montez Sweat thing, how do you look at, like, if the Bears traded yet another second-round pick, 
like they did with Chase Claypool. And if that player doesn't stick around, how would that make you view Ryan Poles and some of his and his trades really since he's been a, a Chicago Bear uh, running the Chicago Bears? I mean, see, that's the thing that I was like really, really trying to digest and really think on because we really and to be honest, we really can point to just about every gym around the league. They got hits. They got misses. That's just the nature of the game. You ain't going to hit on all of them. But to have two seasons back to back of giving up second round picks. You know what I'm saying? It, it. I think it'll put a dent in that armor, per se. But I still feel like this is a move you had to go out there and make. You have to go out there and attempt to try to better your team in ways. You know what I'm saying? But I would say, just like it's a you know an audition for Montez Sweat, I believe it's much more of an audition for the Chicago Bears. Y'all coming out talking about our culture is awesome. <laughs> our culture is legit. Bears fans don't feel like that. So hopefully, you know what I'm saying, he gets to come in and figure out what it is that he wants. And I respect him. Y'all asking this man about contract stuff, he don't even know what he going to lay his head at at night. <laughs> but when it, when it comes to the GM, it is what it is. I like what he's doing. But if he doesn't stick around, it is going to, you know, start to – I'm going to start to lose some of that positivity for sure. For sure. I mean, and, and that's and that's what – when you look at it, Right with Ryan Poles, and we know it's been a short tenure so far. But for example, the trade for with Roquan, right? We traded him. We got a second round pick back. He's now what, uh, according to PFF, the the sixth best linebacker in football this year. We did get a second round pick back, so we'll see what it ends up turning into with that. You look at the Chase Claypool trade; that was absolutely a fail. The Dan yep. Feeney trade, which I just mentioned, was a fail only because we've seen him for three snaps. Right. Like so, at some point, you have to win one of these trades, and so Max. it like. You trade it for a play that brings everything that we need. And like you said, it's the probably the bigger audition is the Chicago Bears trying to convince Sweat to stay because he's going to get his money regardless, Facts. right? So yep. you have to sell him on why the Chicago uh, Bears are the right place for him to be. And I tell you what, the win's probably going to come on the back half of that if we turn it around and win a bunch of games, cool, right? But right. you have to sell him on a vision. And I honestly like this from this standpoint, Bobby, you tell me how you feel, is that it actually puts pressure, I think, on Kevin Warren, on Ryan Poles, on the coaching staff, whoever that ends up being, to prove that there's a vision here. Because if you don't and you lose a player that you traded, a second-round pick, because they don't trust the vision, that should tell you a lot about where your franchise is and where you, what you need to fix. I believe that's one of the major parts of the whole equation. To be honest with you, that's like one of the key pieces because, like, we seen Roquan go out. It wasn't the best situation on how negotiations went. Then you see Ryan Pose go out and get two linebackers for the price of one. So you're like, okay, cool. It was a solid move. The man took a leap of faith and went out and got a, uh, a wide receiver who we believe he has some, you know, top-end talent. Ultimately, it was a fail, but now you go get somebody else and do pretty much the same thing. You got to, at some point, have people in your building that believe that your coach is good enough, that your GM is good enough, and that the organization is ran well. Because Montez Sweat is coming from a clown show. Y'all place him into this. If he sees another clown show, he out of the circus. <laughs> so you, you got you to do something. You got to do something correct. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's a big thing for um for for them. You 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 have to make moves. You have to improve this team. I get it that we're in a rebuild, and I think yeah, we all got excited about the moves. And like you said, getting two linebackers for the price of one. Shout out and and T.J. Edwards is balling. Terrain Evans came along a little bit slower, so it is what it is there. But like, we got to start seeing the direction. And we right. thought we thought that we were seeing that this off season. And it may turn out that a lot of those players end up being part of that direction. But whether it's coaching, whatever it is, injuries, whatever it is, we got to start keep correcting a lot here. And with that being said, Bob, we also got to talk about the dumbass quote from Ryan Poles <laughs> that he believes in, in Matt Eberflus. He still thinks that Matt Eberflus is the right coach for the Chicago. What the fuck is Poles thinking when he said that, bro? To be honest, uh, when hearing it, you'd be like, man, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> but then as a, as a professional... I believe that's something he, he had to do. You can't come out there and just flat out say, yeah, I don't trust this guy. You know what I'm saying? I believe he he handled it in a professional way. Some of the words probably went too far because he could have, you know what I'm saying, some other stuff. But you got to give it to him. He got he going to stick with his guns. And, you know, sometimes these guys don't want to be wrong. We know that he had three coaching candidates. He selected Matt Eberflus, and I think that he going to give him 
every opportunity to prove himself. But the problem is that thus far, the only thing we got out of uh, Matt Eberflus is a slick hair back and terrible defense, bro. <laughs> That's all we got. So far to, to show, like, we understand. Yeah. Like, I do like that they come out and they say, hey, we holding guys accountable. If, if we have a way, we have a way, uh, you know, the, we trying to change the culture. We, we trying to do X, Y, and Z. But at some point, how good is your culture if you can't even put together wins, bro? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so that's something you got to think about a lot. Listen, like, and you could have all the feel good culture as far as people liking each other and all that shit. That shit all sounds good, right? Right. But if you, but if it's not coming down to wins, what are you really doing? What are you right. really doing? Exactly. Because this and, is a production based league, bro. And that's just really what it boils down to. If you're not producing, then there's a problem. That's it. So I, I get it. And I love hearing all the, the positivity and things surrounded. Like, I love hearing that. Do not get me wrong in any stretch of the imagination. I respect it. Um, but, at some point, talk is fucking cheap. Facts. That just Facts. is what it is. Talk and is cheap at when you get to a certain point. If you are not performing or you're not winning or if you're not getting a result that's that's that that you feel that you see that's tangible, you're just saying words. And any, uh, I have a saying. I actually got this from my pops. Anybody can fix their mouth to say anything. It's about the actions you show behind what you say. Exactly. Because the most blasphemous comment I heard Matt Eberflus say, well, in the last four games, we're two and two. So we just going to discount all the other games that you didn't coach out here. You, We just going to discount that, bro. Please make it make sense. And, and I think that's the biggest issue with Matt Eberflus mm. is that, again, I like to say he's a, he, he could eventually go out and be a great politician. Never really answer the question, but give you his vision. We never he really gets the answer, but we constantly hear the visions. And my thing is, at some point, bro, you got to tell it like it is. Cody White here, he stinks. You come out with some with a blatant lie and say some goofy stuff. And then you came out. We had You said a few things, and Justin Fields was like, no, nah, we knew Chase Claypool wasn't going to be here on Saturday. Man, not even an hour later. <laughs> it wasn't even an hour later. That's crazy. Bro. And now we only – we supposed to discount – your entire coaching tenure with the Bears and just look at the last four games and be okay with you being two and two? No, it don't work like that. If your record this season wasn't two and six and instead four and four, the Bears fans probably would be all right. Be like, yeah, we're in a good position. We traded for Montez Sweat. Let's see if we can make a final push. Right now, the vision is very, very blurry. Listen, that vision is less than blurry. That motherfucker is non seeable, bro. Like, that shit crazy. LASIK like, probably can't help this. <laughs> <laughs> they got to get this shit together, bro. Like I said, I, I, I like a lot of this roster still. And I think that you got a different get you got to get a different cook in the kitchen, right? Sometimes. And I, I hate calling for people's jobs, but to me, I mean, there's nothing that I, at least not feasible. I don't think there's anything Matt Eberflus can do to where I say. You, you, he deserves to keep his job, bro. Like, right. outside of going undefeated the rest of the season, I just don't know, bro. Yeah, I don't know about all that. But I, I <laughs> and and the last point uh, that I want to make about the whole Ryan Post Matt Eberflu stuff, bro. Mm. The comments really, like I said, he one shout out to him for being professional because I don't think he's supposed to come out and just you know gash his head coach. But it's really looking real iffy right now. I ain't going to lie. As if they like, hey, we said this was a process. We rebuilding. He's going to get another year type of thing. And we don't know what that could be. But I just don't know if he's the right guy because some so many things that he's done thus far is still questionable. And I still don't know why you went out and got a defensive analyst. If you wasn't going to do nothing against the charge, what he do at home? Watch soaps this past week? <laughs> Cause it wasn't hey, this good. This man got a work from home job at, on the NFL team. <laughs> bro, That's crazy. somebody sign me up. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. Like we can do that, bro. Somebody like what's going on? Just... <laughs> That's crazy, bro. Like, the, I, and I hope my hope was is that they hired this analyst because they didn't want to put a defensive coordinator in place because hopefully they they're not sure on if they're going to keep this coaching staff. Right. But like. There's a lot that that needs to happen with the Chicago Bears team. Uh, you know the extensions, things like that. Um, before we go, I'm, last thing I'm gonna throw to you outside the Matt Eberflus thing, Jalen Johnson, bro. Like I think we we all kind of started off, and it seemed like Jalen Johnson was really maybe humble about this. Like even I, what in the introductory press conference to start the season, he was like, "Listen, 
I'm not going to worry about it. It's my job to go out there and play football. But now he's come out over the last couple of days. He said that he he's a number one. He wants to be paid like the, like the best cornerback in the league. Uh, he doesn't like the way the Chicago Bears negotiate. Do you think he did leave the door open that he's just not negotiating now? They'll see at the end of the season. But in my opinion, if Jalen Johnson hits the open market, there's no way the Chicago Bears retain him. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I agree with you, too. And um, look, man, I just think that it's a tricky thing, too, because if you look at one one of the things that I took from him and, and that he said, I was like, damn, that's a really good point. Because one of the reporters was like, hey, what you going to come out here the last few games, get more turnovers, more interceptions, whatever, whatever. He pretty much flat out and was like, no, I'm just going to play sound football. He's like, that's all I've been doing is playing sound football. Yeah. And sometimes when you don't gamble, you're not going to get those opportunities to make interceptions. And it made me think about uh, Trayvon Diggs with the Dallas Cowboys. He had that crazy year because he gambled a lot. The interceptions were there in the box score. But what were yeah. people saying outside of that? Hey, this is one of the cornerbacks giving up the most yards in the league that year. So I understand him from that. But to answer your question, if he does enter the open market, it's either one, the Bears ain't going to retain him, or two, he going to be humbled as a player because <laughs> he might yeah, not get what he think he going to get. So he can go two ways, yeah. and I can't wait to see what happens. Yeah, I mean, do you think that – do you think it's realistic now? that They would have to – because if you have to choose between the two, I think you, you franchise tag Montez Sweat. But let's say they lock up Sweat's in extension. Are you against franchise tagging Jalen Johnson to keep him here another year? No. I I, I would tag him. I would tag him. And we going – you're going to get that – it's all based on the market. So you're going to be paid right up in the middle of the pack with the other cornerbacks. And then, hey – we're going to see if we can reach a deal after that. And if not, we're just going to have you for the year. I wouldn't tag him twice. Uh, yeah, tagging him twice. Yeah, I think that'd be is. just ridiculous. Yeah, you tag him <laughs> once. Yeah. <laughs> tagging him twice would be, hey, that's a little bit overkill. Right. Hey, but listen, maybe maybe Ryan Post like, hey, shout out to you. You thought you was about to get this money? We got two years nah, left of you, bro. Uh, that would be crazy. Uh but, yeah, man, so overall, we got some things that we need to decide. We got a game against the Saints on Sunday. We already know Justin Fields is going to come back. We got Tyson Bajan again. Um, but, yeah, hopefully we play a little bit better. Uh, anything left, Bob, before we get up out of here? I was just going to say, hey, let's keep let's rock and roll. Hey, because the Saints, they defense over there, they solid too. So we just got to see how these yeah. guys come out in game plan, which is something we never know going into Sunday. <laughs> so, Hopefully we figure you it out. You never know the game plan, bro. Luke Gassie is going to get punched in the face again and be like, I don't know what to do. Um, <laughs> but we'll be here previewing the game, so make sure you guys stay tuned in. Sunday we'll be live. C-Dub have a live call as well. Make sure you guys stay tuned in for that. But, hey, make sure you check out Bobby and C-Dub over the Shy Bulls podcast with the Cognac Boys. <laughs> They're killing it over there. You also can follow uh, us collectively at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback. Questions, comments, concerns, Chicago Bears Central gmail.com. And then lastly, text messages, voicemails, 773 242 9336. We're the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. Shot Town up, bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.